Chapter Twenty Two of Mary, a Fiction. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mary J. Mary, a Fiction by Mary Wollstonecraft. Chapter Twenty Two. In England, then landed the forlorn wanderer. She looked round for some few moments. Her affections were not attracted to any particular part of the island. She knew none of the inhabitants of the vast city to which she was going. The mass of buildings appeared to her a huge body without an informing soul. As she passed through the streets in a hackney coach, disgust and horror alternately filled her mind. She met some women drunk, and the manners of those who attacked the sailors made her shrink into herself and exclaim, "'Are these my fellow creatures?' Detained by a number of carts near the waterside, for she came up the river in the vessel, not having reason to hasten on shore, she saw vulgarity, dirt, and vice. Her soul sickened. This was the first time such complicated misery obtruded itself on her sight. Forgetting her own griefs, she gave the world a much indebted tear, mourned for a world in ruins. She then perceived that a great part of her comfort must arise from viewing the smiling face of nature and be reflected from the view of innocent enjoyments. She was fond of seeing animals play, and could not bear to see her own species sink below them. In a little dwelling, in one of the villages near London, lived the mother of Anne. Two of her children still remained with her, but they did not resemble Anne. To her house Mary directed the coach, and told the unfortunate mother of her loss. The poor woman, oppressed by it, and her many other cares, after an inundation of tears, began to enumerate all her past misfortunes and present cares. The heavy tale lasted until midnight, and the impression it made on Mary's mind was so strong that it banished sleep till towards morning, when tired nature sought forgetfulness, and the soul ceased to ruminate about many things. She sent for the poor woman they took up at sea, provided her a lodging, and relieved her present necessities. A few days were spent in a kind of listless way. Then the mother of Anne began to inquire when she thought of returning home. She had hitherto treated her with the greatest respect, and concealed her wonder at Mary's choosing a remote room in the house near the garden, and ordering some alterations to be made, as if she intended living in it. Mary did not choose to explain herself. Had Anne lived, it is probable she would never have loved Henry so fondly, but if she had, she could not have talked of her passion to any human creature. She deliberated, and at last informed the family that she had a reason for not living with her husband, which must some time remain a secret. They stared not live with him? How will you live, then? This was a question she could not answer. She had only about eighty pounds remaining of the money she took with her to Lisbon. When it was exhausted, where could she get more? I will work, she cried. Do anything rather than be a slave. End of chapter 22